by the beginning of 1819 the condition in England for its poorest people was terrible. Poor economic conditions coming out of the Napoleonic Wars, the Corn Laws and uh, uh, just a declining wage and declining living conditions had enhanced the appeal of political radicalism amongst these working folks in mine and mill and factory. In January of 1819 a crowd of about 10,000 people, men, women and children, gathered at St Peter's Fields to hear the radical orator Henry Hunt and they called on the Prince Regent to choose ministers who would repeal these hated corn laws. The meeting, conducting in the presence of cavalry, passed off without incidents apart from collapse of hustings. A series of mass meetings in Manchester, Birmingham and London over the next few months alarmed the government. Your country will not be tranquillised until blood shall have been shed, either by the law or by the sword. The Home Secretary wrote this to Lancashire magistrates in March and over the next few months the government worked hard to find a legal justification for magistrates to send in troops to disperse a meeting when a riot was expected but hadn't actually begun. In July 1819 the magistrates rose, wrote to Lord Sidmouth warning they thought a general rising was imminent. The deep distress of the manufacturing classes they noted was being worked on by the unbounded liberty of the press and the haranguings of a few desperate demagogues at weekly meetings. They wrote that they possessed no power to prevent the meetings. The magistrates admitted they were a loss as to how to stem the doctrines being disseminated and the words being spoken. The Home Office assured them privately that in an extreme case a magistrate may feel it incumbent upon them to act without evidence and to rely upon Parliament for an indemnity. This radical movement, such as it was, was strongest in the northwest of England where the Manchester Patriotic Union organised a mass rally in August of 1819 where again radical speaker Henry Hunt would deliver a message. Magistrates Yeomanry were concerned that the meeting would end in a riot, or even worse, a rebellion, and they had arranged for a substantial number of regular troops and militia yeomanry to be deployed. The military presence comprised some 600 men of the 15th Hussar, several hundred infantrymen, a Royal Horse Artillery unit with two six-pounder guns, 400 men of the Cheshire Yeomanry, 400 special constables, and 120 cavalry of the Manchester and Salford Yeomanry. A relatively inexperienced militia recruited from amongst local shopkeepers and tradesmen, most numerous amongst which were publicans. As the day of the meeting drew closer, the organisers were clear they wanted a large, peaceful, orderly exhibition which could not be ignored, whilst the government feared that armed insurrection was planned. And frankly, who knows what firebrand radical elements within both groups were planning on attending and within the government had planned. Monday the 16th of August 1819 was a hot summer's day with a cloudless blue sky. The fine weather almost certainly increased the size of the crowd significantly. However, the crowd that gathered in St Peter's Field arrived in disciplined and in organised contingents. Reports of the size of the crowd meeting, well, they, they vary substantially. Contemporaries estimate anywhere from 30,000 to as many as 150,000 attended. But regardless of the actual number, a large and generally well-dressed crowd appeared. Henry Hunt had exhorted everyone to come, armed with no weapon but that of a self-approving conscience, and many were wearing their Sunday best. Shortly after the meeting began, local magistrates called on the inexperienced Manchester and Salford Yeomanry to arrest Hunt and several others who were on a platform with him. The yeomanry charged into the crowd, knocking down Anne Field and killing her infant son who was thrown from her arms before finally apprehending Hunt, before reportedly turning into the crowd to capture banners which had been brought, banners which bore legends such as No Corn Laws, Annual Parliaments, Universal Suffrage and Vote by Ballot. In response to their sabre cuts they received thrown stones and according to John Tyus, a reporter from the Times, from this point the Manchester and Salford Yeomanry lost all command of temper. William Holton, chairman of the Cheshire Magistrates, summoned the 15th Hussars and the Cheshire Yeomanry to disperse the crowd. They charged with sabres drawn into the tight press of panicking people. 
Well, within 10 minutes, the crowd had been dispersed, but at the cost of at least 11 dead and more than 600 injuries. Probably. There was never an exact number recorded of those killed or wounded. There's no official count. There was no inquiry. And many of the injured escaped to tend their own hurt privately. The meeting at Peterloo had many women present. Female reform societies had been formed in the northwest of England during June and July of 1819, the first in Britain, and many of the women were dressed distinctively in white, and some formed all-female contingents carrying their own flags. Of the 654 recorded casualties, at least 168 were women, four of whom died either at St Peter's Field or later because of their wounds. The event was first labelled the Peterloo Massacre by the radical Manchester Observer newspaper in a bitterly ironic reference to the bloody Battle of Waterloo which had taken place just four years earlier. The London and national papers shared the horror felt in the Manchester region but the immediate effect of Waterloo was a crackdown on reform and the government passed six acts which were aimed at suppressing any meetings for the purpose of radical reform. Peterloo had been a bloody and terrible incident. But more blood would need to be shed before any pretense at electoral reform or universal suffrage was enacted in this country.